from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering machine learning everywhere. Build your ladder to AI. Brought to you by IBM. Now welcome back to uh, IBM's Machine Learning Everywhere, Build Your Ladder to AI, along with Dave Vellante, John Walls here, wrapping up here in New York City, just about done with the programming here in Midtown. Um, Dave, let's, let's just take a, a step back, and we've heard a lot, seen a lot, uh, talked to a lot of folks today. Um, uh, you know, I, you, you, first off, tell me, um, AI, we've heard some, some optimistic outlooks, some, I wouldn't say pessimistic, but some folks saying, eh, hold off, you know, not as daunting as some might think. So just your take on, on the artificial intelligence conversation we've heard so far today. Yeah, I think generally, John, that people don't realize what's coming. I think the industry in general, our industry, technology industry, um, sorry, the consumers of technology, the businesses that are out there, they're steeped in the past, that's what they know. They, they, they know what they've done, they know the history, and they're, they're, they're looking at that as sort of past equals prologue. Everybody knows that's not the case, but I think it's hard for people to envision what's coming and what the potential of, of AI is. I mean, has, having said that, uh, you know, Jennifer Shin is a near-term pessimist on the potential for AI, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of implementation challenges, but as we said at the open, I'm very convinced that we are now entering a, a new era, mm -hmm. that it's going to, that the, the, the Hadoop big data industry is going to you know, pale in comparison to what we're, we're seeing. And we're already seeing very clear glimpses of it. I mean, the obvious things are, are, are Airbnb and, and Uber and the disruptions that are going on with Netflix and over-the-top mm -hmm. programming and how Google has changed advertising and, and how Amazon is changing and has changed retail. But what you can see, in, and again, the best examples are Apple getting into financial services, moving into healthcare, uh, trying to solve that problem, Amazon buying a grocer, the, the, the rumor that I heard about Amazon potentially buying Nordstrom, which my wife said is a horrible idea. <laughs> but, but, but think about yeah. the fact that they can do that as a function of, the, that they are a digital first company, are built around data, and they can take those data models and they can apply it to different places. Um, who would have thought, for example, that Alexa would be so successful? Um, that Siri, you know, is not so great. Right, right. right. <laughs> Alexa's yet, become her best friend. And it came yeah. out of the, the, the blue. And it seems like you know, Google has a, a pretty competitive you know, piece there. But I can almost guarantee that the doing this with our thumbs is not the way in which we're going to communicate in the future. It's going to be some kind of natural la language interface that's going to rely on artificial intelligence and machine learning and, and the like. Um, and, and so I think it's hard for people to envision what's coming uh, other than fast forward where machines take over the world and Stephen Hawking and, 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 and Elon Musk say, hey, we should be concerned. Maybe they're right, I, I, you know, not in the next 10 years. But, and, and that's what, well, we mentioned Jennifer, we were talking about her in the Influencer panel, where, um, you know, uh, and we've heard from others as well, it's a combination of human intelligence and artificial intelligence. That combination's more powerful than just artificial intelligence, and so there is a human component to this. So for those who might be on the edge of their seat a little bit or looking at this from a slightly more um, um, concerning perspective, you know, maybe not the case, maybe not necessary is what you're thinking. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess the, at the end of the day, the question is, is the world going to be a better place with all this AI, and are we going to be more prosperous, more productive, healthier, safer on the roads? I, I am an optimist. I, I come down on the side of, of yes. I would not want to go back to the days where I didn't have GPS. You know, that's Can you imagine, me. right, if, right? You, if you did that now, you go back five years, just five years you know, from where we were, are now, back to where we were. I mean, Waze, Waze was nowhere. Right? Yeah, I mean, all the downside uh, of these things, uh, I feel is offset, offset by that, and I do think it's, it's, it's incumbent upon the industry to try to, you know, deal with the problem, especially with young people, you know, the blue light problem. The at, addictive at issue. Yeah, right. that, yeah, that's yeah. right. I mean, yeah. but I, I feel like those, those downsides are manageable, and the upsides are of, of enough value that you know, society is going to con continue to move forward. And I do think that you know, humans and machines are going to continue to coexist, mm -hmm. at least in the you know, near to mid to reasonable long term. But the question is, what can machines do that humans 
can't do? Mm -hmm. And what can humans do that machines can't do? And that, the answer to that changes every year. It's like I said earlier, not too long ago, machines couldn't climb stairs. Right? They can now. Robots can, can climb stairs. Can they negotiate? Can they, you know, well, look, can they identify cats? Yeah, who would have imagined that, that all these cats on the internet <laughs> would have led to, <laughs> to facial recognition technology? It's improving very, very rapidly. So I guess my point is that that, that is changing very rapidly. And there's no question it's going to have an impact on society and an impact on jobs and all those other negative things that people talk about. To me, the key is, how do we embrace that and turn it into an opportunity? And, and it's about education, it's about creativity, it's about understanding multidisciplinary, ha having multi-talented disciplines that you can tap. So we talked about this earlier, not just being an expert in marketing, but being an expert in marketing with digital, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, an understanding in your, your toolbox. So it's that sort of two-tool star mm -hmm. um, that I think has got to emerge, and maybe it's more than two tools. So I, that's how I see it shaping up. And the last thing is disruption. We talked a lot about mm -hmm. disruption. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any industry that's safe. Colin was saying, well, certain industries that are highly regulated, I, I, in so, some respects I can see those taking longer, but I see those as the most ripe for disruption. Financial services, healthcare. Um, I mean, can't we solve the HIPAA challenge? <laughs> we can't get access to our own healthcare information. Well, right. well, things like artificial intelligence and blockchain, we're talking off the camera about blockchain, those things I think can help solve the challenge of maybe I can carry around my, my, my health profile, you know, my, my medical records. You know, I don't have access to them. I mean, it's hard to get them, right? So can things like artificial intelligence improve our lives? I, I think, you know, there's no question about it. What about, uh, well, on the other side of the, of the, uh, the coin, if you will, the, the misuse concerns, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of great applications. There are a lot of great services, a lot of, as you, as you pointed out, a lot of positive, a lot of upside here. But as opportunities become available and technology develops that, you run the risk of somebody crossing the line for nefarious means, and there's a lot more at stake now because there's a lot more of us out there, if you will. So how do you balance that? Yeah, I think you have to, there's no question that's going to happen, uh, and it has to be managed. Uh, but even if you could stop it, I would say you shouldn't because the benefits are going to outweigh, you know, the risks. Uh, and and. You know, again, the, the question we ask the panelists, how far can we take machines? How far can we go? Um, that's question number one. Number two is how far should we go? Mm -hmm. Now, we're not even close to the should we go yet. We're still in the how far can we go. You know, Jennifer was pointing out is, you know, I can't get my password reset because I've got to call <laughs> right, somebody. Right. That problem will be solved. So you say it's more of rapidly. a practical consideration now than an ethical one. Yeah. Right now. Right now. Um, more so, and there's still certainly still ethical considerations. Don't sure, get me wrong. Sure. Um, but I see light at the end of the privacy tunnel. Uh, I, I see artificial intelligence as well. It's, it, analytics is helping us solve uh, 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 credit card fraud and things of that nature. Um, autonomous vehicles are just fascinating, right? I mean, both culturally, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn how to drive a stick shift. <laughs> right, right. right, so funny no, story. It's not going to worry about that yeah. anymore. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right, but it was an exciting yeah. time in our lives, yeah. so there's a cultural downside right. of that. Um, but I, I don't know what the highway death toll number is, but it's enormous. If, 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 if cell phones caused that many deaths, we, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be using them. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's a problem that I think you know, things like artificial intelligence and, and machine intelligence can solve. Um, and then the big other thing, the other big thing that we talked about is I see a huge gap between traditional companies and these born in the cloud, born mm -hmm. data oriented mm -hmm. companies. We talked about the top five companies by market cap, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, which is Google, who am I missing? Google, uh, um, Apple. Apple, right. And those are pretty yeah. much yeah. Very much data companies. Right. Apple's got the data from the phones. Google, we know where they get their data, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So 
Traditional companies, however, their data resides in silos. Jennifer talked about this, uh, Craig as well as, as Colin. Data resides in silos, it's hard to get to, um, it's a very human-driven business, uh, and the data sort of is bolted on. With the companies that we just talked about, it's a data-driven business, and the humans have expertise to exploit that data, which is very important. So there's a giant skills gap um, in existing companies. There's data silos. The other thing, we, t we touched on this, was, is, where does innovation come from? Innovation drives value, drives disruption. So the innovation comes from data. He or she who has the best data wins. It comes from artificial intelligence and the ability to apply artificial intelligence and machine learning. And I think something that you know, we take for granted a lot, but it's cloud economics. And it's more than just, and somebody, one of the, the folks mentioned this on, on, on the interview, it's more than just putting stuff in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it, it's certainly managed services, that's part of it, but it's also uh, economies of scale. It's marginal economics that are essentially zero. Mm -hmm. uh, it's speed, it's low latency. Um, it's, and again, global scale. You combine those things, uh, 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 data, artificial intelligence, and cloud economics, that's where the innovation is going to come from. And if you think about what Uber's done, what Airbnb have done, where, where Waze came from, they were picking and choosing from the best digital services out there and then developing their own software from this, this what, I, what I say, my colleague Dave Michelle calls this matrix. And it, just to repeat, that matrix is, the vertical matrix is industries. Mm -hmm. The horizontal matrix are technology mm -hmm. platforms, cloud, data, mobile, social, security, you know, et cetera. They're building companies on top of that matrix. Mm -hmm. So it's how you leverage the matrix is going to determine your future. Whether or not you get disrupted, whether you're the disruptor or the disruptee. You know, it's not just, about, I mean, we talked about this at the open. Cloud, SaaS, mobile, social, big data. They're kind of yesterday's news, <laughs> all right? It's now new artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, cognitive. We're still trying to figure out the parlance. So it's, you can feel the changes coming. I think there's this matrix idea is very powerful and how that gets leveraged in organizations ultimately will determine the levels of, of disruption. But every single industry is at risk because every single industry is going digital. Digital allows you to traverse industries. Mm -hmm. We've said it many times today, Amazon went from bookseller to content producer to grocer to, to grocer now, maybe right? high-end re retailer, um, uh, you know, content company, Apple with Apple Pay and, and you know, companies getting into healthcare, trying to solve you know, healthcare problems. Uh, you, the future of warfare, you live in you know, the Beltway. Mm -hmm. The future of warfare is in cybersecurity mm -hmm. um, are, are just coming together. Right. One of the biggest issues we, I think we face as a country is we have fake news. It, the, we're seeing the weaponization of social media, as James Scott you know, said on the Cube. So all these things are coming together that I think are going to make the last 10 years look tame. Hmm. All right, so um, let's just switch over to the, kind of the, um, uh, the currency of AI you know, data. That, 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 hmm. and, and we've talked to... Um, uh, like Sam Lightstone today was talking about the database querying that he's able that they've developed, you know, um, with the, the Plex product. Uh, some fascinating capabilities now that make it a lot richer, a lot more meaningful, a lot more relevant. Um, and that seems to be really an integral step to making that stuff come alive and really making it applicable to improving your business because they've come up with some fantastic new ways. To, to squeeze data that's relevant out and get it out to the, the, the user. Well, if you think about what I was saying earlier about data as a foundational core and human expertise around it versus what most companies are as human expertise with data sort of bolted on or data in silos, mm -hmm. what was interesting about uh, QueryPlex, I think they call it, mm -hmm. is it essentially virtualizes the data. Well, what does that mean? That means I can have data in place, but I can have access to that data. I can democratize that data, make it accessible to people so that they can become you know, data-driven, the data is the core. Now, what I don't know, and I don't know, and I've just heard about it today, and I missed that announcement, I think it was announced it a year ago, um, is it 
he mentioned DB2, he mentioned Natiza. Most of the world is not on DB2 and Natiza, even though IBM customers are. You know, I think you can get to Hadoop data stores and other data stores. I just don't know how, how wide that goes, what the standards look like. He joked about the standards. Is, you know, the great thing about there's, standards there's, is, There are a lot of them. There's, there's always another one that you can pick <laughs> if uh, this one fails. And he's you know, right about that. Um, but so that was very interesting. And so this is, you know, again, the question, can traditional companies close that machine learning, machine intelligence, AI gap? Mm -hmm. Close being, you know, close the, the gap that the big five have, you know, created. And even the small guys, small guys like Uber and Airbnb and so forth. Um, but even those guys are getting disrupted, uh, um, the Airbnbs right. and, 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 and the Ubers, right? You, again, blockchain comes in and, and you say, well, why should I, why do I need a trusted third party called Uber, <laughs> right? Why can't I right. do this on the blockchain? I, I predict you're going to see even those guys get disrupted. And, and I'll say something else. It's hard to imagine that a Google or a Facebook um, can be you know, unseated. But I feel like you know, th we may be entering an era where this is their peak. Could be wrong. I'm an Apple customer. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I'm not as enthralled as I used to be. They got, you know, trillions in the bank. But is it possible that open source and blockchain and the citizen developer, the, the weekend and nighttime developers can actually attack that engine of growth for the last 10 years, 20 years, and, and, and really break that monopoly. Mm -hmm. The internet has basically become an oligopoly where five companies, six mm -hmm. companies, whatever, 10 companies kind of control things. And is it possible that open source software, AI, cryptography, you know, all this activity could challenge uh, the status quo? I, I've been, been in this business as long as I have, Things never stay the same. You know, right. leaders come, leaders go. Right. I was going to say, never say never. Yeah. Right, you don't know. So, so it brings it back to IBM, which is interesting to me. It was funny, I said that, I was asking Rob Thomas a question about disruption, and I think he, he misinterpreted. I think he was thinking I was saying, hey, you're going to get disrupted by all these little guys. It, IBM has been getting disrupted for, for years. They know how to sort of reinvent, and a lot of people criticize IBM, you know, how many quarters they've, they haven't had growth, blah, blah, blah. But IBM has made some big, big bets on the future. People, you know, criticizing Watson, but it's going to be really interesting to see how all this investment that IBM has made is going to pay off. Mm -hmm. um, they were early on. Uh, you know, people in the Valley like to say, well, that, you know, the Facebooks and, and, and even Amazon, Google, they have the best AI. You know, IBM, you know, is not there with them. But think about what IBM is trying to do versus what Google's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very consumer-oriented, solving consumer problems. Now, now, consumers have consumers have really led, you know, the last the consumerization of IT. That's true. But none of those guys are trying to solve cancer. <laughs> right? So IBM tech is talking on some big, hairy, audacious goals. And uh, I'm not as pessimistic as some others and you've seen in the trade press, it's popular to do. But so bringing it back to IBM, I saw IBM as trying to disrupt itself. And the challenge IBM has is it's got, it's just got a lot of legacy software products that it purchased mm -hmm. over the years. And it's got to figure out how to get through those. So things like QueryPlex allow them to create abstraction layers. Things like Bluemix allow them to bring together their hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of SaaS applications. That takes time. Um, but, but I do see IBM making some big investments to disrupt themselves. They've got a huge analytics business. You know, we've been covering them for quite some time now. They're the leader, if, a leader, if not the leader in that business. So their challenge is, okay, how do we now apply all these technologies to help our customers create innovation? What I like about the IBM story is they're not out saying, we're going to go disrupt industries. See, Silicon Valley has a, a, a bifurcated disruption agenda. On the one hand, they're trying to, you know, cloud and SaaS and mobile and social, very disruptive technologies. On the other hand, is Silicon Valley going to disrupt financial services, healthcare, government, <laughs> education? I think they have plans to do so. Are they going to be able to execute that dual disruption agenda? Or 
are the consumers of AI and, and the doers of AI going to be the ones who actually do the dis disrupting? We'll see. Right. I mean, Uber's obviously disrupted taxis, Silicon Valley company. Um, can they is that too much to ask Silicon Valley to do? Right. That's going to be interesting to see. So my point is, IBM is not trying to disrupt its customers' businesses, and it can point to Amazon mm -hmm. trying to do that. Rather, it's saying, we're going to enable you. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know. You, you know no. You're down in D.C., right. Jeff Bezos, spent a lot of time there. We just want the headquarters. Post. That's all we want. We just want the headquarters. Well, yeah. to the point, I mean, if you've got such a you know, growing company and monopoly, right. Right. maybe you should set up an HQ2 in DC There's to no, try to, yeah. right? He and said something the other day. Three of the that, 20, right? Yeah, or, he was saying DC the other day that, that, that you know, maybe we should think about um, you know, enhancing, he didn't call it social security, but sort of the, the government essentially helping people you know, plan for retirement and the like. I, I, I heard that and said, whoa. Is he basically telling us he's going to put us all out of jobs? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, if I'm a customer of, of Amazon's, I'm kind of scary. So one of the things they should absolutely do is spin out AWS. I think that you know, helps, helps mm -hmm. solve that problem. But back to IBM, Ginny Rometty was you know, very clear at the World of Watson you know, conference, you know, the inaugural one, that we are not out trying to compete with our customers. Now, I would think that resonates. Mm -hmm to a lot of people. You bet. Yeah, so. Well, to be continued, right? Next month, back with IBM again? Yeah, uh, I think. Right? Three days. Third week in March. Yeah. So Monday, well. Tuesday, Wednesday, the Cube's going to be there. Next week, we're at the, uh, uh, in the Bahamas. Uh, this week, actually. Not as a group taking this vacation. Yeah. You know, actually, a working no, expedition. No, it's got a blockchain yeah, so. conference. Actually, it's this week. What am I Although saying? I, next I'm, week. I'm happy so. to volunteer to grip on it's, that uh, shit, by the way. It's, so uh, just flying out tomorrow. <laughs> All right. yeah. Good. It's happening fast. Well, yeah. enjoy this. Uh, always good to spend time with you and to spend time with you as well. Thanks, so man. you've been watching theCUBE. Machine learning everywhere. Build your ladder to AI. Brought to you by IBM. Have a good one. Thank you.